Hi, this is David McCam for WebTNG. In this video, I'm looking at a new plugin for quickly creating faceted grids. The maker of PNA add-ons for Elementor and PNA Forms has just released a new product called PNA Grids. This is a plugin that lets you create content grids and carousels, such as you'd find on a shop, blog, or archive page. You can also equip your grids with front-end controls for filtering, sorting, and pagination. These types of front-end controls are called facets. Historically, adding facets to content listings has been costly and difficult to set up, but PNA Grid is one of a new generation of plugins that breaks the process down into a series of logical steps. Although there are just a few steps involved, the plugin is far from simplistic. There are a lot of layout and style options, as well as the ability to work with dynamic data, all of which makes it a sophisticated solution. In this walkthrough, I'm going to use PNA Grid to create a custom archive for a custom post type. PNA Add-ons is a premium only offering, so you get it from their website. If you check out their website, you'll see that the Grid Builder has support for ACF, Metabox, Jet Engine, Pods, and also they've just added support for Toolset. They have some demos on their site, so you get an idea of different types of things that you can create. There's some basic documentation. What they have is pretty good. I think it could use some more in-depth documentation. And then the pricing, they have packages for one, 100 and 1,000 sites for annual, or 100 sites for lifetime. And it's currently on sale, a launch sale. As we saw on the homepage, there's an extra discount if you own one of their other products. Okay, so that's the website. I have a test site. You can see I have a number of posts that have different categories. I'm using the Pro Bloxy theme. And I have custom post type UI and advanced custom fields installed. I use custom post type UI to create the books custom post type and the genres custom taxonomy and advanced custom fields to add custom fields to the post type. I have a number of book records. Here are some custom fields. So we'll use the genres and author's photo in our faceted grid. And when you install PNA Grid, you get a new admin menu area here with some pages. This first page settings, that's just the license. But then these other pages here, these are the steps you take in constructing your grid. So a card, for example, this might be a card. Those are the single items on your grid, and you see they have some demos. And then grids, that's your listing with rows and columns. And you can see they have some different types of layouts here as demos. And as we'll see, you can create your own. Facets, those are the controls for sorting and filtering and pagination. And here are some examples of those. And then PNA Grid has a cool feature is you can use their plugin to create a custom archive for posts or custom post types. So this is pretty powerful. It has support for Gutenberg, Elementor, and Oxygen. But if you're using a different builder, then you can put together your own template. And like here are some examples. And it'll give you a short code that then you can insert in your other builder. You can import JSON files here, and you're able to export any of these things as JSON files. So once you create something on one site, you could reuse it on another site. And then it has this interesting feature for analytics. It shows you which pages and grids and filters are used the most often. Okay, so that's the admin overview. Okay, let's go through the steps now to create our custom archive. This is what comes with the theme, and Bloxy is actually better than some themes because you can set the size of the featured image. Some themes can't really handle a portrait orientation image, but because it's portrait, in order to preserve the aspect ratio and fill up the column, the featured image here is really huge. So let's create a book archive using the PNA Grid Builder. So I'm gonna go back here 
you notice see you can create an archive template and we'll we'll get to that but first let's go to cards and we're going to want to create a card for books i'm going to begin and import one of these demos note that this one is a woocommerce it has the wish list and the product attributes so I think they should label these that are for WooCommerce so that you know you have to have WooCommerce installed to use it. But I kind of like this one, so I'm going to import it. And the name card 3 does not help me. If you had a bunch of these and they were named card 1, 2, 3, you wouldn't know what they were for. So I'm going to rename this to book card and let WordPress regenerate a new slug for it. Okay, now I'm going to go in and edit with the PNA grid editor. This is kind of the editor interface. It's very similar no matter what you're editing, but depending on the item you're editing, these options, these elements over here might be different, but generally things are gonna be very similar. This hides if you want a fuller screen. If you're looking at you know, the details for one of the elements, this brings you back to the element list. If you're working you know, for your different device sizes, a preview, there's a settings. If we wanna add some custom gutter, custom CSS, or custom JavaScript, this takes you back to the WordPress admin and a save button. This is like a section. Then we have two columns inside of that. This is the featured image. Here we have the post publish date and the post title. And for these sections and columns and elements here, this is for editing it or holding it to move it, duplicate or delete. Now, when you click on one, you go into the settings, see image dynamic data, it's picking now the featured image but you have all of these options here, including ACF, Metabox, Pods, Toolset, and Jet Engine, WooCommerce, okay? You can do the size, the aspect ratio. You know, this is going to be an archive, so if they click on the image, you'll want it to go to the post URL, but you know, if you've used Elementor, Beaver Builder, any of the modern builders with dynamic data support, you're familiar with this kind of list. And then these are some style options. You can do a custom size, border, whatnot, alignment. And then a lot of the elements, not all of them, but a lot of them have this set of style options. You have normal hover widget and hover card. And so you have margin padding, height, width, position, overflow, topography, so on border, background. You can add a custom class or ID. You can add animation options. You can add custom attributes. The visibility is by role. You can add some conditional visibility. The featured image is set up for landscape. So let's go in and give this a custom size. We'll set the width at 180 pixels and we'll align it center. It kind of looks like a book cover can come back and tweak it if we need to. Then over here we have the publish date and the post title. This post title looks pretty small. So let's go to topography. Oh yeah, it's 13 pixels. So we'll make that bigger. Then we're gonna wanna show the genres on here because we wanna filter by genre, give that option. So let's add the terms, the genres. And we'll need to connect this up with genres. And then under the post title, let's add a text element. And this lightning bolt, that's an indication for dynamic data. These are things you would see if you've used page builders that support dynamic data. We're going to want the post excerpt. Okay. And that's huge. Oh, it's an H2. So let's make that a paragraph. Under this, let's get fancy. And what I'm going to do here is add the author's photo, which I've done in other videos where I'm testing an archive builder. All right, so here we have a section. Here we have a column. I'm going to duplicate the column. So we have two columns. I'll make this one be, let's say, 25% wide. And this one be, say, 70% wide. So it's less than 100. And then in this one, let's add the image, an image. 
and we're going to have an ACF field. And you have to type the field name in. It doesn't show you those. So it's authors photo. Rather than set the aspect ratio here, I'm going to go into size and do custom size. Make it 100 pixels wide. And we'll center that. And then over in this side, add a button for the read more. Change the text. Give it the link to the post URL. And let's add an icon and put it after. Now in button style, we'll give it just a little margin at the top to align it there. And then on the section itself, let's give that some margin all around and a background color. I like blue, so let's do a very light blue. Okay, now I'm going to save this and go back to the admin. Okay, now let's create a grid for the books. And I'll call this book grid. Save that and edit it. And we add the control. So you have the option for custom post type or post type taxonomy term. It's found our card. You can tweak the current query, use a custom query. This wish list is for WooCommerce. Recently viewed posts, that would be interesting how that works. Then we choose our post type. There's our book card, so that looks pretty good. Then you can filter on the back end by post status, include or exclude, include or exclude taxonomy terms or custom fields. So that's interesting. Layout, card, animation, cache. Okay, so I think that's actually all we need to do. So I'm going to save that and go back to the admin. Now for facets, we want to add pagination. So let's take a look at what we have here. It's got a couple options here. This actually looks pretty nice. So we'll import this one and rename this to pagination. And we'll update that. And let's look at this real quick in the editor. There's nothing here that ties this to a particular grid yet. That connection gets made later on when you add them to a template or you know to a page. So this can actually be used for multiple grids. I kind of like it. There's the pagination one. Now let's make one for genre, the genres filter. And we'll edit that. Okay, so let's add a section and then we'll say genres and we'll hide the label. And this one we want to have checkboxes. Okay, we don't want them to go down, we want them to go across. So we'll do this inline list. And then we'll select the taxonomy, we want it to be genres. Okay, and now we want this to be centered. Okay, so we want an inline list. Inline auto. Now let's center that. I think I go to the column and there we go, okay. So let's save this and go out. Okay, now let's go and create our archive template. And this is going to be archive for books. And I'll save that and we'll edit it. And we'll add our section. And at the top, I want to put in our genre facet and applies to the book grid. And now I want to add the grid. OK. And then at the bottom, we will add our pagination. And that applies to the book grid. Now we give it the archive display conditions. And we want this to be for the book archive and for genres. So we'll save this. We'll go back to WordPress. And if we did this right, 
We should see it here now. And here's our custom archive. We have a custom field image showing. We can filter by our custom taxonomy. And we have our pagination. At this point, hopefully, you're getting a feel for the interface and process. Now for some discussion and conclusions. There were a few things I noticed that could be improved. I saw there were demos for both regular use and for use when WooCommerce was installed, but these were not labeled. Another thing is allowing the user to pick a post for previewing when designing a card. That would make it easier to do things like adjusting image sizes. Also, as mentioned in the beginning of the video, more documentation would be helpful. I knew the steps involved from using other grid with facet builders, but an overview of those steps would be helpful for new users. On the plus side, I found the editor to be pretty easy to figure out. The elements had a rich number of options and I was able to accomplish what I wanted to. PNA Grid is remarkably full featured and solid for a brand new plugin. Launching with support for ACF Metabox, Pods, and Jet Engine is impressive. Toolset support was just added while I was making the video. Being able to create custom grids is nice, but Gutenberg and page builders usually have some post grid option. What makes this stand out is the ability to add the front end controls for filtering, sorting, and pagination. Creating the facets and adding them to the grid was also easy. The ability to create custom archive pages is a great feature. It adds customization and flexibility options that you only find in advanced theme builders. For example, I was able to add the author's photo to the book archive, something which you can't do with Elementor Pro's theme builder, and which requires a bit of code to do with Beaver Themer. PNA Grid is nicely priced. Because I own their Elementor add-on, I got a 20% discount on my purchase. This is definitely a plugin I'll use, and if you need a grid builder with easy to implement front end filters, then the PNA grid builder is a good choice. So that's the walkthrough and discussion of the PNA grid builder. There's a text version available on the WebTNG website, along with other walkthroughs, reviews, and resources. I hope you found the video useful. Thank you for watching.